everybody thinks they can play country music. It's really hard. I mean, it really is a lot harder than you think. I mean, the bass, it's, it's an exercise in minimalism, and every note has to mean something, you know? Yeah. And, and, and more important than that, the space between the notes, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and how to lock up with, I mean, if you got a lock with the left, you know, left hand a piano, and all this stuff, you know, it's, you know, and then there's, you know, never play the five before you're going to the, you know, and all that kind of yeah. stuff, you know, the rule, the Bob Moore rule, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, for different reasons, different, different records mean things to me. I mean, you know, uh, uh, I mean, and I, I, when I ask this question, you know, whenever it happens. I mean, I, a, a seminal record for me really was, and it was, I mean, the, the whole experience was very, uh, very interesting, was that a few small repairs record, uh, that Sean Colvin record uh, that was back in 98. Anyway, I'd, I'd been a Sean Colvin fan for a long time, you know, and the thing that she and John Leventhal uh, musically were, were doing was very interesting to me. And so I got a call from John to go up and do a record, you know, and uh, and it was a really interesting uh, project. I mean, it was really bare bones. The stuff was not really completely written. The lyrics ended up changing in a lot of the songs. But out of all that, uh, it was a very small band, and sometimes we would cut three piece, you know, just it, it, John playing guitar, Sean Pelton playing drums, and me playing bass. And then, of course, John being the, you know, kind of uh, uh, savant that he is. Ended up going back and do putting a lot. I mean, he can play everything, right? Uh, but he, uh, uh, but uh, it was it was really raw and really organic and, and a lot of fun. And out of that, uh, th this record, Sonny came home, and it ended up getting record of the year and the song of the year, and you know, and, and, and you know, Sean had a great deal of success with that with that album album then, and uh, you know, it was really really good. And that that track is a real standout, you know, and. Uh, and that's a record that I love, that a lot of people heard. Uh, and then there's some, you know, every once in a while there's a chance, you know, it's like, and as, as, as opposite on the spectrum as this may be, a record that I had a lot of fun cutting was, uh, was a Hank Williams Jr. record called Born to Boogie, you know? And it was just, and the process of that was really interesting. Barry Beckett and Jim Ed Norman were producing that. And it took a while to get that track. And and it was it was an exercise in uh, in psychological manipulation, I think, in some ways, because it needed that track needed to be really really aggressive, and it was just it was kind of laying there for a while, despite what I you know. Anyway, finally, we all got mad enough at the same time, you know, and it was one of those bam, and there it was, you know, and and that was and that record did very well for Hank also. And then there's records that hardly anybody ever hears. Uh, you know, one of my favorite records that I played on it from, from beginning to end is a Randall Bramlett record called No More Mr. Lucky. And uh, it was on New, it's on New West, you can still get it. And uh, we went down to Athens and uh, uh, Joe Bonadio was playing drums and, uh, and there again it was a small band. And we had the most fun cutting that record, man. And it was just one of those records that just sort of just fell out and to me it's some of my most interesting to me uh, uh, bass playing you know it's sort of I don't know and I love Randall Bramlett I mean anybody who's not familiar with him needs to get familiar with him he's a brilliant songwriter and singer and I met him play with Steve Winwood but Randall was in sea level and there was a band back in the 70s and all that kind of stuff anyway he's been around for a long time but anyway that's, that's an example of a record that hardly anyone has ever heard but if, if somebody wants to know what I'm all about, play bass, that's kind of it, you know. And then there's some other records, you know, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, Firewire with, uh, uh, it's a Larry Carlton record. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think there's some good play on that all the way around, you know. And I don't know, man, there's a lot of them. Yeah. There's a lot of them.